ABC Chad here doing a vinyl new arrivals. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Fall is in the air. How can you not be happy about that? I'm sitting here with the Knott's Highland Brewing Company Oat Milk Porter, which is one of my favorites. Just absolutely delicious. Cheers. Um, got eight records to show, and it's a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, nice quiet time in the house, so you've got to take what you can get when you have a two-year-old running around, so just thought I would uh, get on here and get to it. First thing playing in the background right now, a record I was extremely fortunate enough to pick up today, this is Can Monster Movie from 1969, I believe. Their debut album, this is a repress on Mute Records. This is just an absolutely fucking phenomenal record. If you've not heard it, check it out. Um, I don't have to sing the praises of Can. Everyone in the BC, most of the people in BC know who they are. Uh, most of their praise goes to Otago Mago, but this is worth checking out for sure. This is an incredible record. Um, recently re-released on September 2nd in the United States. Um, didn't have this one and um, was able to get it. It's a really nice remastered version. Sounds great. It's in, it's in stereo. Um, the, the packaging itself is a bit sparse. Nothing really to write home about. But it's fairly reasonable. It's about 20 bucks. And it's my understanding they're reissuing about the first five records, so I'm going to be on the lookout for hopefully get some more of this. Uh, the influence of this band, it's hard to overstate the influence of can in popular music today, especially with like LTV sound systems, the DFA scene, just incredible influence on music today. When you listen to something like this, the, the interplay and musicianship, I really wonder, was, is there, was there a better band, like from 1969 to 1972? I don't know that there was. It's just incredible. So, check that out. Really excited to get that. A few more records. Uh, this is a Jazz ECM. This is Abercrombie Quartet from 1979. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, with ECM, it's a bit... I, I, I like 80% of the stuff on ECM, but sometimes I'll blind buy one and it sounds like elevator music. Uh, this one is not. This is very dynamic, great airplay between the musicians, right out of the gate even on the first track. Uh, $5 for this. Can't, can't put that, can't turn that that way. Uh, solid lineup. John Abercrombie on guitar, Richard Byers on piano, George Ross on the bass, and Peter Donald on the beat down. This is a uh, this is a good one. Worth checking out. Great, great guitar work from John Abercrombie. This is a um, interesting record, a blonde buy for me. It's a French pressing of Jean Michael Jarre's a Quinault. I can't say that. Um, I think I've seen this shown in the BC, and that's why I went for it. Uh, it's sort of it's uh, from 1979 on Pastel Records. Kind of kraut rock, soundscape, tangerine dream, Klaus Schultz type stuff. Really good. Love the warm analog synth. It's a very, uh, each song really does just paint an atmosphere. It's uh, good stuff. It's a bit dated, but uh, it was with the, uh, it was actually in the kraut rock section. So $10 for it, French pressing. Took a chance on it. Um, it's going to set right by the tangerine stuff. Tangerine dream stuff. I really like it. It's very some some songs are pretty epic, so it's it's worth checking out um, if you've never heard of this guy. This is a, another reissue. This is uh, Sufjan Stevens' "Enjoy Your Rabbit" on the Asthmatic Kitty. This is Sufjan's second album, if I do recall correctly. It's a two LP set on colored vinyl. One is a clear record. The other one is a very pretty blue that I'll show you comes with a very nice 16 page, or 1630, yeah, I want to say 16 pages, uh, booklet, there's a pretty blue, um, I had never heard Enjoy Your Rabbits, I was a big fan of Seven Swans, Illinois, Michigan, and even, uh, I really like Soup John's EP, All Delighted People, that doesn't get a lot of talk, but I think that's a really good EP, here's the, uh, really pretty artwork there. 
a really nice thick book. But I never heard this one, and I'm going to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed. This is pretty much just soundscape work, which there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't think it's all that good. Um, very little voice, and the whole thing pretty much just Sufjan doing Brian Eno, maybe. I don't know. I, I didn't really like it that much, to tell you the truth. But uh, it was a good deal. It was like 20 bucks for, for this whole set. And being a fan of the guy's work, I decided to, uh, to go for it. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I much prefer his uh, his other stuff that I, I just spoke of. Let's start that can over again. Um, moving right along, 2000, a couple of 2014 LPs. This is The Electric Worms. This is a side project for Flaming Lips, specifically Wayne Coyne and Steven Drog. It's with their team with another Oklahoma City band, which I don't remember the name of. And this is sort of a prog crowd rock, psychedelic, garage band. I mean, a lot of different genres being melted together, but done very well. Of course, this is produced by Dave Fridman and Scott Booker, the, flip, the Lips regular collaborators, and recorded at Wayne's house. It is just a trip. It's only six songs, one of those being a Yes cover. Uh, it's a nice purple vinyl there. The Yes cover is part of the sunrise. I think this would get a lot of love in the BC, and I'm not seeing it anywhere. I think that everyone should check this out. Um, highly recommended, especially the song The Bat and Living. Very, very crowd rock. Sounds like the lips covering Faust. Uh, just my type of shit, for sure. I, I really, really like this. I really love that the lips are at a stage in the career where they can do whatever they want, and Warner Brothers is going to put it out. It's just kind of cool. So, highly recommend that. It's actually better than... Um, Better than the Terror, better than a lot of the stuff they've done here recently. Uh, a few others here. 2014 LP, Ty Seagal, Manipulator, uh, Drag City. Ty Seagal, of course, the infamous, very, um, what's the word? But that's so many records. Uh, so many records. <laughs> like three a year. And uh, that can be a bad thing because people start to question the quality if you're able to put out that much work. Um, and that's a fair criticism. Having said that, this is one that he really slowed down and took his time on, from what I understand. He didn't just spend three days on this. He spent a lot of time on this. And it really shows. The production by far stands out compared to Ty's earlier work. Right out of the gate with the first song, Manipulator. Very Beatles-esque, Sgt. Pepper's era feel right from the get-go on this. And the guitar work is just fucking insane. He is lighting the fretboard on fire. This is truly the guitar record of the year for me so far. Just, again, uh, somebody playing very interesting melodic thrashing solos. Um, it's also extremely catchy. Uh, very accessible. Bubblegum hooks. If you're, if you're on the fence with Ty or you've never listened to his music, I would recommend starting here. I think it's his most accessible record to date. It's just breakout record. Um, check it out. It's really good. Like, the only criticism I have of it is like all Ty's stuff, there's a lot of songs on it and it probably could have lost two or three songs to be a little bit more concise. But no, no major complaints. A lot of great songs. Definitely his best record. So check it out. Uh, just two more. We're rolling quick tonight. I've seen this show a lot so I won't get into the packaging, but just say this is the record of the year for me. Swans to be kind. This is the three LP set on Young God Records. What can you say? Just a behemoth of a record. Massive, massive record. I, I can't even put it to words. It's just an experience. You just have to put it on and take it in from beginning to end, assuming you have two hours to kill. Um, Michael Jira is a genius. The production is just, with John Congleton, is just some of the best I've heard all year. Uh, check it out. I think it's the best Swans record ever. I think it's better than The Seer. And lastly, a psychedelic record from 1968, The Druids of the Stonehenge Creation. This is a reissue on Sunday's records. Uh, psychedelic garage rock, sort of like the litter, and sort of like the litter doing the sonics, I guess. A uh, very gruff voice. They do I Put a Spell on You, and it's all over now, Baby Blue. I think every band in the 60s did I Put a Spell on You at some point. Um, but I would recommend this. This is really good. Uh, addition to the side collection. Great name too. Very 60s. So anyway, just wanted to hop on here real quick. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, 
have a good one.